Hi folks, in this section we are going to talk about the Earth and the Moon. Um, as before we launch into a discussion of other planets in our solar system, one of the things that astronomers have discovered is the more we know about our own planet, the more we understand all the other planets that we can see. So let's begin with our favorite planet, um, planet Earth. There really is no place like home. This picture right here is a very famous, historically famous photo. It was taken uh, right around Christmas by the crew of Apollo 8 in 1968, and it was the very first blue marble picture of the Earth, basically showing the entire Earth as a big blue ball floating in space. And I was a very small child at the time that this photograph was published. And, and most of you at your stage of life, you have seen pictures like this thousands and thousands of times. Well, when this picture first came out, it was an incredibly big deal because it gave us, gave us a perspective that we had never seen before. So that's a pretty beautiful planet we have here. We're going to start with a little discussion of geology. Uh, geo means Earth. And geology is the study of the Earth and the structure's surface and the interior of the Earth. So this is going to be a very short, fast uh, geology discussion. We are not going to replace an entire course in geology, not by a long shot. But uh, we will talk a little bit about weather because we're going to look at weather at other planets, continental drift, volcanoes, stratification, and lots of other things. So why do we even bother with geology in an astronomy course? Um, well, mostly so that we can understand what we're going to see on other planets, our moon, and in the vast array of exoplanets that we are now beginning to discover. This is a wonderful photograph that I found. This was back from the 1960s. Um, I didn't write down the exact year, but the Apollo astronauts, which were the first group of people to actually walk on the surface of the moon, they were taken out and trained in geology. Now, why did we train astronauts in geology? Well, these were the eyes and the ears of scientists while they were walking on the moon. So many, many different expeditions and training trips were taken with the Apollo astronauts out into the various deserts and geologically rich formations on our planet so that while they're walking on the moon, they could recognize specific features. This is a picture of them at Meteor Crater in Arizona, um, and we will talk about Meteor Crater and the meteors, meteorites that have hit the Earth in the past. So Earth's origin, where did we come from? It is believed that in the creation of the solar system, um, after the sun is born, it blasts out around us uh, lots and lots of small debris. There is a huge pile of gas that gravitationally is attracted together that eventually ignites and becomes our sun. But the leftover debris from the, the gravitational event, that large force of gravity that pulled everything together to make our sun, left behind lots of tiny little bits of rock and debris. Gravitationally, one little rock attracts another little rock, and you then, they smash together at such high speeds that they essentially melt or fuse together. This repeats over and over and over, and small rocks get into, create bigger size rocks, and then big rocks collide to make larger rocks, and we believe that is the process where planets come from. So the small little bits that are running around orbiting around are called planetesimals, and they collide to form planets. In this process, lots and lots of heat is generated when you have high-speed objects hitting each other, and that created a molten Earth, an Earth that about 4.5 billion years ago, when it was created, was a big, hot, molten ball of goo. Now we've discovered, scientists have discovered, what the interior of our planet looks like. How do you look inside of an entire planet? Well, the way that we can discover what layers are there is through seismology. Seismology is the study of vibrations traveling through a body. And what is large enough to vibrate an entire planet? Well, that would be earthquakes. There are earthquake 
sensing devices that are located all over the planet. And when an earthquake goes off somewhere in the planet, it generates waves that travel everywhere in every direction by looking at which detectors get hit first, last, or second, um, and comparing the results of each. This is how geologists have actually learned what's going on in the interior of our planet. So what we believe happened was when the Earth was first created, it was this hot ball of goo. And because it was hot, it was basically a fluid. Now the center of our planet is a inner core of metals, but the planet was so incredibly hot due to all of the collisions of all the different planetesimals that the fluids could separate out kind of like a parfait. And what happened was the densest materials, the heaviest materials, fell to the center, and that would be the iron and nickel and the heavy metals. And then there are less dense substances that literally floated to the top. Now, I don't know about you, but the concept of rocks, which make up the exterior of the Earth, floating to the top sounds a little bit weird and awkward, but you have to keep in mind this occurred at a time when the entire planet was a big ball of hot fluid. Okay, that will do for this time, and we'll come back later and talk a little about density.